Here's the thing. Churches use copyrighted music all the time. Matter of fact, on any given Sunday, every church is probably breaking copyright law in some way, including yours. And so we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about what it is, uh, why you shouldn't break the law, and how to do things correctly so that you are within the law and you don't get messed up using music on your live streams. Let's talk about it. So the bottom line is uh, recreating, using somebody's music that they have produced, performing it, um, posting lyrics, um, sharing it publicly with an audience is usually um, against copyright law. Um, you know, you print a, a lead sheet uh, of a song and you hand them out to your musicians so that you can learn that you've just broken copyright law, right? Um, and so their copyright law really does encompass just about everything that a lot of people would consider normal behavior. Um, now, my wife is a recording artist. She's a songwriter. Her name is Brittany Scott. You can look her up on YouTube. Um, a lot of people have recorded the songs that she's written. Um, there are uh, a lot of uh, people that have um, recorded her songs. There are people that perform her songs in churches all over the United States, all over the world, um, you know, every week. And so this gives me a little bit of insight into copyright holders rights. So the first thing that I think everyone should probably know is that creating quality music content is very, very difficult and very, very expensive. There are hours of work that go into creating each and every song, and there's thousands of dollars that are put into producing um, a song. And especially if it goes onto an album, which is you know typically 13 to 16 songs or um, an EP, which is a small album, album, you're talking about like three or four songs. Um, you're talking about thousands of dollars and countless hours of writing the music, writing the lyrics, making sure that those are good, getting musicians, hiring musicians, hiring background vocals, hiring a producer that knows what he's doing, and then spending all the hours in the studio actually recording that music, recording the vocals, and then mixing those vocals, mastering those vocals, producing the music that will eventually end up on iTunes or, or Spotify or something like that, that people can then consume. And if everything goes well, uh, especially in the, in the Christian, you know, the church world, if everything goes well, people will like it and they'll want to use it. So I don't think there's any Christian artist out there that is against churches using their music in their praise and worship. That's not really what that's about. Even though copyright law protects that, I don't think there's any Christian artist um, that really cares about getting money from people performing their songs in their worship service. But for the sake of, of just being fair with the artists, with the songwriters, it's important that we understand and appreciate that creating the stuff that we use in our worship services for free is not cheap. Um, now, some amateurish albums can actually cost over $50,000 to create, sometimes over $100,000 to create a single album. And that's if you do it right. Um, and if, that's if you do it high quality. Um, but the other side of that is that the singers, the songwriters, the ones that produce that kind of uh, intellectual property rarely, if ever, recoup all of their money through album sales. Um, it just doesn't happen, especially today where people don't buy full albums. Usually they'll go and they'll buy a single song for 99 cents. And uh, in the in the church world, you're rarely going to make that much money back on your album sales. Where singers, songwriters, recording artists, where they actually recoup that money is through selling things in addition to the album. So they'll sell like their chord charts. They'll sell the vocal charts. They'll sell the, the stems or the multi-tracks that... Uh, go along with it so that you can perform it and have the multi-tracks along with your with your performance. And so they sell all of these little pieces that go along with it in hopes that they will eventually make enough money to cover the cost of creating that intellectual property, but also hopefully to invest in future creations as well. Now it's in those little pieces where copyright law in the church world really kind of becomes an issue. Because if you're selling a lead sheet for $3 a piece, um, it's not unheard of for someone to buy that lead sheet for $3 and then distribute it to their circle of friends, right? And this is where it kind of comes down to you have to be careful because the church can be really full of a lot of pirates. And I don't think pirates are Christian, and yet there's a lot of pirates in the church. Everybody say arg. So uh, here's, here's one thing that happened one time, and I want to tell this story simply because I want everyone to know that copyright law and the protection for the artist is not a bad thing. 
I think a lot of churches and a lot of people rationalize their illegal behavior, immoral behavior, um, by just thinking that copyright law is unfair in its practice. And in a lot of cases it is. But here's where um, something, you know, that might make sense as to why copyright law exists. Um, when my wife released her first album, it, it went very popular. Um, the song Fight For Us, if you've never heard it, you should look it up. But Fight For Us, um, people were doing it everywhere. And um, my wife got a text one day from one of her friends that said, just so you know, um, I'm a member of this Facebook group. It has hundreds of members from people all over the country, all over the world. And a lot of them are, uh, are music directors in churches. But she, she texted my wife and said, I just think you ought to know someone is distributing your lead sheets and, and music on that Facebook group. And because uh, she was a member of that Facebook group. Turns out it was the owner of the Facebook group that was doing this. And so she had bought um, lead sheets and stuff from my wife for just a few dollars and then went on to this group with hundreds of members and said, if anybody wants this, here it is for free. That's called illegal distribution. That's called theft. Um, it's it's not okay um, because you are distributing somebody else's property where they are trying to sell it and you're distributing it for free. Um, an example of this would be like, uh, let's say you write a book and um, you you print up you know a thousand copies of this book. You're selling it for twenty dollars a piece, and it costs you eighteen dollars a piece to create that book. And so you're hoping the two dollars a piece out of the thousand books will give you enough to go and reinvest in the future. So you've got this stand up, and you're selling your twenty dollar books. Let's say somebody comes and buys that book for twenty dollars, runs down to the nearest Kinkos if they're still Kinkos, and they print off a lot of copies of that book. And then they go out and they set up right next to your book stand. And they say, here are copies of this book you can get. He's selling it for $20. i am going to give them to you for $5 or for free. Um, that's not okay because all you did is you took this other person's property, made a cheap copy, and now you're giving it away and you're ruining his sales. And so, therefore, that artist, that author cannot go and create more books because he can't afford it because he's got all these books now that won't sell because this person has given them all away for free. So with that being the case, I sent a message to this, um, this owner of this Facebook group, and I was very kind, but I just let them know that this is not okay, this is not ethical, um, that you're not supposed to do this. this is against copyright law. And the fact that she was an owner of this group that had hundreds of members, um, if we sued, it would actually be really bad for her because she would, she would basically be on the hook not for breaking the law once, but for breaking the law a hundred, hundreds of times for each and every person she's distributing this to. So I just told her, please take this down. Don't share this. Um, it's, it's not right. You can share a link for people to go buy it. That'd be fine. But you can't distribute this for free um, the way that you were doing. I got a very hateful reply back. And uh, this person was, was talking about how I'm unreasonable or whatever. And uh, so I just responded back and I said, take it down. Um, or, you know, we'll have to take action or something. I got, I got pretty direct with her. I got a response back that said, okay, I will take it down, but it's going to be about five hours or so because I'm at work. I don't have access to Facebook. I'll take it down as soon as I get home. So I said, okay, that's fine. About 30 minutes later, my wife gets a text from her friend again that's part of this Facebook group with a screenshot where this lady had miraculously, now talk, this is a Christian lady, she miraculously got access to Facebook enough to post a message to the group saying that I had messaged her, that I had told her she had to take this down. And so everyone has about three hours left to get this before she has to take it down. So I sent her another email back with a screenshot. She demanded to know who was sharing it with me, and I wouldn't tell her. But I sent it back, and I, I basically just opened the floodgates. I said, this is immoral. This is not Christian. This is theft. This is thievery. <laughs> and uh, I included some scriptures there. But long story short, um, what was basically happening is we had invested a lot of money and taken a lot of risk to create that, hoping that we could generate that income back so that not only will we pay for all the stuff that we invested, 
but we would be able to set aside a little bit more to go and create another album. Nobody's getting rich off creating music for churches. It just doesn't happen. If you want to get rich, you become Lady Gaga, become something like that. But people are not getting rich by creating music for the kingdom of God. And everyone that thinks that you should just give things away for free because it's the kingdom of God does not understand scripture. There is scripture upon scripture that goes against that. Don't muzzle the ox. Um, Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. He talks about it again in 1 Timothy chapter 5. The laborer is worthy of his reward. Don't muzzle the ox, everything like that. So people that say, well, since it's a Christian song, she should give it away for free. They don't know what they're talking about. They're actually not biblical. Therefore, they are not full of truth. They're false. I'm going to jump off that soapbox and just let you know um, the copyright law is there to protect the ability for the artist to get what they deserve so that they can keep creating more art. With that being said, it's very, very hard for churches to comply with all copyright law because the copyright law is written for the secular industry. It's not written for the Christian church world. And so there are some practices in the church world that are naturally going to go against copyright law. And like I said before, there's not a Christian artist out there that I am aware of that finds it um, bad that a church is performing their song in their worship services. Most of them are honored. Most of them, that's why they create it. So um, while it might be against copyright law, it's not against the moral law of the artists that are creating that. Um, so let's talk about the legal part, the things that actually matter for your live streams when it comes to copyright law, and then the things that, that you can do and kind of the problems that you're going to face with copyright law and live stream because it's not perfect and it's not going to be perfect at any time in the future. But this is, a, this is a way to protect yourself while also giving yourself the best chance to have success. Um, so let's talk about the legal part first. To be legally righteous, you need a license if you're going to perform music um, that somebody else has written, somebody else has, has copyrighted. You're going to need a license to perform that in your church. Now, I say that knowing that most churches perform this music without a license. Um, any lyrics that you put on your screen um, or live stream, you have to have a license to be able to display that to the public. That's copyright law. And if you're live streaming, you need a streaming license on top of the license to perform it live as well. So uh, the good news is that it's not hard to get those licenses and it's not expensive. Um, I'm going to recommend that you go to the Christian Copyright Licensing International, that's CCLI, and you purchase a license for your church. It only costs $159 a year, and you're covered for all of the songs under their umbrella, and it's it's most popular songs. I, ha I think they have like 150,000 songs under their umbrella, and it's growing all the time. So they license most of the popular Christian music today, and uh, so all you do is you pay $159 a year and you can have their plus license. Their plus license covers the following. You can stream your worship service while you're performing songs um, that are copyrighted. You can stream to multiple platforms. You can display the lyrics on your screen and on the stream. You can uh, stream the master recordings of, of the things that you're doing. So if you perform the songs and, uh, and you record them, you can stream those recordings. You can stream the multi-tracks. And uh, you can you can stream pre and post service uh, streams. So with that license, you can stream your worship service on multiple platforms, display lyrics, and all the things that most churches need to do. Um, and so you're covered legally. So if someone comes along, if there's some Christian artist or publisher that decides, you know what, I'm going to pick this church in wherever you are, and I'm going to sue them because they performed one of my client's songs on Sunday, ended up on their live stream, they had the, the lyrics posted, so I'm going to sue them. They're going to come and try to sue you, and you're going to have the license and say, sorry, I had permission. I purchased this license. That song is under the umbrella, and therefore, I'm okay, and no one can sue you. So legally, you are righteous in this case. Now let's talk about the bad news, which is the platforms on which you're streaming on. So just because you are legally um, able to stream music, songs, display lyrics, just because you have permission from the artist you have a license, does not mean that all of our social platforms are prepared to understand or know that. Um, so you can, you can post things in a variety of ways. 
and still make uh, get flagged for copyright infringement, especially on Facebook. Facebook is is rather bad at this. Um, so in my experience, here's how church music is going to be handled once you have a CCL license, CCLI license. Um, on YouTube, what's going to happen is YouTube um, does, for copyrighted music, YouTube does revenue sharing. So basically what that means is if it detects a song that... Uh, believes is copyrighted and they're very good at detecting the songs rather than give you a copyright strike, which would happen if you just, you know, were streaming someone's music for the sake of distributing the music. Um, but you're performing the music, so it's different. But um, rather than giving you a copyright strike, they give you a copyright notice, a claim. And what this claim basically means is we're going to let your live stream live there with this music on it. But the publisher of that music, the artist of that music, is going to get a portion of the ad revenue that would flow to that uh, to that video. So, um, you know, we have enough subscribers on YouTube. We have enough watch time that our church is um, is partner with YouTube, and so on some of our Bible studies and stuff, we allow ads to be uh, played. And those ads generate a little bit of revenue for our church. Same with church setup. We are partners on YouTube. We have enough subscribers. We have enough watch time that we qualify for their partner program. Therefore, the ads that show up on our videos, we get a portion of that money, and it helps to, to fund the videos that we're creating, for example. Um, YouTube is just going to say, I'm taking a portion of that, and we're going to send it to the, the publisher. We're going to send it to the artist, to the songwriter, so that they get... Um, their rightful cut, the royalties from the uh, the revenue that their song is generating. And uh, so that, in my opinion, that's the most fair thing that they can do. So um, you may think it's unfair. You may think that, you know, they shouldn't monetize your video, but YouTube is a free platform. Therefore, the audience and the people that are using the free platform is the product. So you are the product of YouTube. So if YouTube wants to put an ad on your video, they are within their rights to do it. And I think it's it's very fair for them to say, we're not going to take your video down. We're just going to make sure that the publisher, the copyright holder, is getting the portion that they deserve um, according to copyright law. Facebook does a much worse job than YouTube, um, mainly because Facebook's mon monetization is very poor compared to YouTube. So Facebook has been trying for a long time. and be honest, I don't spend a lot of time on Facebook, so you may be more familiar with this, but Facebook started putting ads, pre-roll ads, mid-roll ads in their video content um, to try to make money, to try to then share that money with creators and try to compete with YouTube. I don't think that's going very well. Um, anytime Facebook put an ad in a video that I was watching on Facebook, I would just move on. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know how well that's going, but I know Facebook's monetization of content um, has been very poor compared to YouTube's model of monetizing content. Therefore, Facebook has a harder time in saying, I'm going to take this money that we have generated and share it with a publisher. So Facebook is in jeopardy that they allow this copyright protected music. And I'm talking about music as a whole, like uh, secular music and everything. If Facebook just allows it to be streamed and everything, then the publishers can sue Facebook. Um, and so Facebook wants to protect itself. Therefore, since Facebook does not have the capacity to do revenue sharing like YouTube does, they've got to protect themselves in some other way, and that means muting or taking away your stream. Um, now, even if you have a license, Facebook can and may mute your stream. Facebook can and may just take your stream off the air um, because Facebook is Facebook, and that's just how it is. Um, I see a lot of people, and, and I usually chuckle, but it's also kind of frustrating that people are believing this. Um, they'll post something like at the top of their Facebook post over their live stream, we do not own the rights to this music. That doesn't do anything. That <laughs> doesn't protect you in any way. Um, it's, it's a silly thing. It's like those people that publish on Facebook and say, copy and paste this onto your wall, and then they're going to, you know, obey the privacy that you just stated. And so people put this huge disclaimer on there. It's, it's like a chain letter. Um, those things, it doesn't protect you at all. What will protect you is following CCLI's guidance and making sure that you publish what they say to publish. So 
Um, Facebook is really bad, but you can take a few steps, which we'll talk about in a second, to protect yourself and give yourself, you know, the best possible um, chance not to be muted or or kicked off by Facebook. Um, other closed platforms like Resi or other platforms that it's closed. In other words, Facebook and YouTube are very public. But if you pay for a service that allows you to embed your videos on your own site, that's closed. People come to you for the video content. They don't go to a public platform. Those might do a better job where if they have to talk to you about copyright, they will be able to identify the CCLI, CCLI license and uh, and make a, a judgment because they're going to be a much smaller platform and they'll probably deal with you if they ever do at all um, on kind of a one-on-one -on -one basis. When they see the license, they'll let you go and uh, and and kind of turn you loose. Um, so closed platforms are easier to deal with than the public ones. YouTube is best. Facebook is worst. Um, but what do you do then in order to make sure that Facebook or YouTube doesn't unfairly give you a strike or you know, what's the best thing that you can do to make sure that you are protected from the platform taking action, not from legal, because the license gives you the legal protection. What can you do to make sure that the platform um, doesn't take undue action against you? So this is the information from the CCLI website, um, ccli.com, and this is the terms of agreement with their streaming license. So um, the first thing is to enjoy the rights and benefits of your license that your license provides your understanding and adherence to the following is necessary and you agree to keep your license in good standing with the annual fee um, honor the terms and conditions of this program as outlined in the permitted activities and activities not permitted uh, validate the participation of each song before you stream it so this means you need to make sure that the songs that you're streaming are actually covered under their umbrella um, and you can go to the song validation section to learn how to do that. Um, you use the license in a lawful and ethical manner. When streaming a song, um, include the song title, writer credits, and copyright notice in, a, in substantially the following form. So this is where um, something that you need to take um, heed to. This is something that will protect you uh, beyond any reasonable doubt and probably make Facebook uh, keep you on the air rather than than banishing you um, accidentally. Um, so every song that you're going to stream that day, you need to be able to publish this. So um, in your in your Facebook description um, or in the very first comment, but in the in the post is best that somewhere in there, maybe at the very end, if you if you write something else that you would write, I'm performing Hallelujah, the words and music by John Doe, copyright 2018 by the Good Music Company. Used by permission with your license number, and this one, two, three, four, five would actually be your CCL license number, um, and you would post that into Facebook. Now, this text may dis be displayed in the stream at the start of each song, or outside of the stream in your video description. It might be a best practice to do both. So, just like um, think of when you're, if you ever see a, a music video played on TV. Um, at the very beginning of that music video, down in, in the lower third, they're going to put something exactly like this, um, something exactly like. Um, they're going to put that on the screen. It's usually in little white letters down at the bottom or in the top left. Um, but this would be a good practice, too, to just post this when that song begins for the first 20 seconds or so that, that those, um, those words would appear like in a lower third. Um, that you're performing this, that would protect you and put it in your description um, so you would get kind of protection on both ends. Um, here are the permitted activities that you can do with this license. You can live stream songs performed in your church in audio or video form. You can retransmit the song so you can stream again, um, upload so that people can watch on demand those um, from your church service. You can distribute the audio video files of songs performed in your church service to personal computers or similar, uh, similar capable of receiving such files. So um, this is like creating a recording of your service that you would sell. Um, some people do that or they distribute it for free or whatever. Um, uploading videos to YouTube um, and similar service provided that the copyright owners have the right to monetize and place ads on videos. This is why Facebook has such a hard time containing their own copyrights. Um, so um, the terms of agreement with CCLI does not override the terms of agreement with those streaming platforms. That's why Facebook, um, I would really, I mean, YouTube is much better than Facebook. I'll just put that out there when it comes to streaming. 
Here's things that are not permitted. You cannot charge a fee or receive any form of compensation for any of the permitted activities. So I said sell, can't sell it. Um, assign or transfer any rights under your license to any other church or group. You can't just let somebody else use your license. Um, you can't um, authorize any third party that is not your church's website. Um, you can't stream an artist or record label recordings of songs. Um, you can't stream songs from concert, conferences, or special events held at the church property where a financial charge, including donations, is required. Um, so if you require um, like ticket sales or something for people to get in, um, you cannot stream the songs from that um, performance. Um, you can't stream songs contained in non-church service audio or video content, such as a non-church service teaching video, televised event, or special um, productions. Regarding YouTube, um, you can't uh, sub-license or enter into any revenue-sharing agreement for the monetization of the song. Um, and block you cannot block the use of advertising to be placed on a streaming website on behalf of the song owner, which is, an, again, why Facebook is having such a hard time. To confirm if a song is covered by your CCL license, first identify the song's publisher, then check if that publisher catalog is authorized under your license by searching the streaming license covered catalogs at this address. And when in doubt, just contact CCLI and ask, and they're very helpful. So unless you're doing something out of the ordinary, normal church use of copyrighted music will be protected under the CCL license. Um, I would make sure that I get the license that covers streaming if you're live streaming performance of those songs and then just adhere to those to those permitted activities, to the things that you should do. And then if you really want to protect yourself, make sure that you um, that you paste the uh, the copyright information on your stream or in the description or both so that you're protected um, from any kind of action from the platform. And if you do this, you should be safe.